Hi, everybody. Thank you, Judy, so much. It's so fun to be here today. I have um, had the great blessing to sing with Hannah a couple of times, and it just makes me happy. It just brings nothing but happiness. So I'm happy we're all here together, too. It's nice to be together. Um, I just am going to say that the Caregiver Support Program is hosting this event today here at Mass General, and we've been around for about three years. This is our newest program that we call Health and Resiliency, and Hannah's going to really talk about just for a few minutes how this brings us, how this raises our health and well-being. Um, so thank you for being here. We also just want people to know that we're actually part of the Division of Palliative Care and Geriatric Medicine which is part of the division of medicine. And we work closely with psychiatry, we work closely with neurology and primary care. So um, please spread the word far and wide as we are trying to do to let these opportunities be available as to as many people as possible. Um, share with your friends and family so they can join us if they would like to. Um, we kind of have a broad mission and we'd like to mention it every time. Uh, when we started this program, the idea was to transform memory care, nothing big, just a little thing to really change it at MGH in this institution. So um, that's what we hope to do. And all of these things that we do together are bringing, bringing us closer to that goal. So we offer, we want to say that in addition to these kinds of programs, um, Tuesday night, we had a monthly lecture, our monthly lecture series where we talked about palliative care and dementia. And it was, a, it was really, really beautifully done and will be on our website in a week or so. If you didn't get a chance to catch it then, you can go to our website and see the recording. Those are offered every month. Um, these programs are offered monthly on Thursday afternoons. We have some exciting things coming up. So keep an eye, we have some um, massage, uh, acupuncture, or not acupuncture, but acupressure, and we have poetry, we have all kinds of wonderful things coming up. Um, but we also offer individualized care consultations uh, for families who are seen at MGH, either in psychiatry or neurology, and in our MC, our memory care program in primary care. Um, we have a three-part skill building class for caregivers, which is really an educational course, which is wonderful. Barbara Moskowitz, who many of you know, teach that class and our support groups, which Barbara Moskowitz also leads. So we have a lot going on and we're, we want you to know that, um, that it's more than just this wonderful opportunity, um, but here we are. So the, lastly, I just wanna say that it's amazing to me, the generosity of the people who have supported our work. This program is 100% philanthropically supported. So if you have um, any interest in supporting our program or have more questions about that, please go to our website and let us know and we'll reach out to you and answer whatever questions you have. So I'm gonna introduce Hannah and stop talking so we can get to singing. Hannah Shevsky is a board certified music therapist at Mass General Hospital with the Cancer Center and inpatient psychiatry service. Her work focuses on the evidence-based use of music to help families and patients and their families cope with the emotional, physical, and psychosocial impacts of illness with an ultimate focus on improving well-being and quality of life. So now I am got the job of Hyatt spotlighting Hannah so she can, and I apologize ahead of time if I call her Hannah, I have a habit of doing that. So we're going to turn it over to Hannah as soon as I can spotlight her. There we go. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks, Susan. Hi, everyone. Um, it's really great to be here. Um, I got to do this last year, kind of early in the pandemic, and it's wild to think that here we are, and I'm, I'm happy to be back. So um, I am going to share my screen and um, get into a couple slides here, um, but we're going to get into music pretty quickly, too. So um, let's see. There we go. And I click present. All right, can everybody see that? Thumbs up, awesome. So we're calling this Sing Out, Finding Joy and Ease Through Music. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the science behind um, you know, how music does its thing and then we're gonna get to experience it too. But let's begin with the song. So this is the song that I wanna bring us into is called Up Above My Head. Um, and it's the, the the version that I think 
is most well known as Sister Rosetta Tharp, um, who some people call the godmother of rock and roll, I think. Um, a really wonderful gospel singer who did all sorts of amazing stuff with her guitar. Um, and I want to bring us into it, but I have a couple um, suggestions here on finding your way into music. So we can sway and move our bodies along to the beat. Sometimes that happens naturally without even re us realizing it, right? We might be tapping our toes or moving our shoulders along. So definitely let that happen. Of course, you can sing or hum along. As Judy mentioned, we will be muted, but I actually think in some ways that might give you the, the you know, uh, oomph to sing even louder because you're not worried about anything. You're just singing loud in your room. So you can sing out. Um, also, you can grab a percussion instrument if you have one or really anything that you can tap. There's so many things that can be percussion instruments, desk, you know, tops, tabletops, um, a couple pens together can make a nice click. Um, a shaker can be from like a little spice box or something like that. So find something that you can tap along and, uh, and we'll get into some singing. So first you can just take in the sound of that guitar. You might notice that you're already swaying along. Take a couple deep breaths with the music too, just to kind of arrive. So you can breathe in. And out. We'll do one more of those, breathing in. And out. Awesome. just a little bit of a hum to he feel our voice in our body. So we're gonna hum something like this. We're gonna go. Mm -hmm. You can do that with me. Mm the lyrics up because they're call and response. I'll sing a line and you'll sing it back to me. All right. So the first line goes like this. Up above my head, up above my head, I hear music in the air, hear music in the air. Up above my head, up above my This one's a little bit longer. It goes like this. I really do believe, really do believe there's joy somewhere. Try that. It starts with, I really do believe. I really do believe. I really do believe there's joy somewhere. All right, back to the top. Up above my head, up above my head, I hear singing in the air, hear singing in the air, up above my head. somewhere we'll do it together here we go i really do believe i really do believe there's joy somewhere yeah let's see how about above my head i hear clapping in the air here we go up above my head Yeah, I really do believe. 
a little warmed up from that. Awesome. I see some nods. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is just spend a little bit of time um, going through some of the benefits of music, M many uh, which I'm sure you'll already kind of know and understand sort of just from, from singing and from listening to music on your own too. So here we go. I'm going to kind of go by categories and we're going to start with music and the brain because there's a lot of cool stuff there. So one thing about music is that it's processed all throughout the brain. So there's, you know, most things there's like a speech center and a language center and a movement center, right? There's there's certain areas that control that. Music, the, you know, the neuroscientists have found lights up all these different parts of the brain. So that within itself then allows for new pathways to be created between two parts of the brain that both are lit up by music, etc. So that's just really cool, I think. Um, it also, uh, listening to music or engaging with music can increase dopamine um, and other neurotransmitters that bring us those feelings of pleasure and joy, right? So you've probably experienced that putting on a favorite song and just kind of feeling that mood lift. Um, it also, um, use those musical memories and the emotions that they elicit, those are stored in the prefrontal cortex. And those memories are often accessible even after other memories are not, right? So we see that a lot, how those, those musical memories, they're there and you might go to be taken right back to that place you were when you first heard that song or when you were listening to that, that music. Um, and then similarly, the physical memory of playing an instrument, for example, is embedded in our cerebellum, so another part of the brain, and that doesn't fade, right? So, so sitting down at the piano, and you, if you've played before, that muscle memory kind of kicks in, um, or even just the movement that we often do along to the music. That's that's just going to be there. So, the, the, those those memories and those experiences connected with music, they they are kind of stored deep in our brain, and they're not going anywhere. So then if we look on a little bit to music in our bodies, many wonderful things here. So listening to music and engaging with music can kind of quiet the nervous system. It can reduce our heart rate, lower our blood pressure. Um, it can encourage us to take some nice deep breaths. We saw that already, you know, when you're singing, you have to take deep breaths to sing, but also even just listening to a calming song you might notice oh, my breathing starting to slow. I'm kind of <sighs> taking some of those deep breaths. Um, so that happens quite naturally along with music often. We all know that music can motivate movement. Um, so, you know, thinking about, as I mentioned, putting on a favorite upbeat song and noticing that your toes are tapping and your head is bopping without even thinking about it, right? So our body just kind of wants to move to the music. Um, and that's actually connected to a word called entrainment, um, that some of you might've heard, which is this idea that, that our bodies want to move to a beat. So when there's a beat on, we're often going to be moving to that beat. So one example of that is if you're, um, you know, going on a walk and you want to try to keep a pace up, if you find a song that has about that pace, it'll feel that much easier to stay with it because you're kind of, your, your brain and your body is kind of entraining to that beat. So you're moving to that beat. Um, and there's a lot of really um, awesome research on that uh, and kind of how that can even help people who are um, recovering physically to try to get maybe their gait, their, their walk back to a certain place. And if they put on the right song, then that those movements can kind of match that, the, the rhythm. Um, so our bodies are very connected to music, of course. So if we shift to music and our emotions, while I take a quick sip of water, we find that 
you know, music, listening to, to your favorite music can reduce anxiety and stress. Um, that probably is connected to some of the things on the previous slides, right? Taking some of those deep breaths, lowering your heart rate can in turn also reduce those feelings of anxiety and stress, decrease feelings of fear, right? We might find a little bit of comfort in the music. Um, and often music is so connected to emotion, right? But sometimes it can actually give us a space to feel and express our emotions in a way that feels safe. Um, sometimes we talk about, I talk about this a lot in my work in music therapy where you know, the song can kind of be a container for us to feel things. And sometimes we're surprised, you know, I didn't think I was going to cry while listening to this song, but here I am. But then that music becomes a place to put that emotion to kind of get it out. Um, so, and I'm sure many people have, have had experiences like that. Um, so connected to that, it helps us find comfort and ease. Um, and increases feelings of competence and connection to sense of self. Um, so, you know, going back to those songs that, that we know and love, maybe from our childhood, um, kind of connecting to who we are, connecting to memories, um, and, and yeah, kind of connecting to, to a sense of meaning. And one thing that I put at the bottom here that I want to definitely emphasize is you know, people sometimes ask me as a music therapist, okay, so what's the right music to listen to to make me calm, for example? And the answer is your music. There's not one style of music or one genre of music that is the most effective for calming or for joy or for reducing anxiety. It's the music, it's, it's all about preferred music, right? So it's really about the music that you feel connected to, that takes you back to a positive place, that connects to, to positive memories, et cetera. So um, I'll talk about this a little more at the end, but I always encourage people to make playlists of their favorite music so you have your music ready for you. Um, and that's the music that's gonna really be most supportive to you. All right, so I'm only moving fast because I wanna give us a good amount of time to sing. Um, but the last category I wanna talk about is music and our connection with others. So music is a naturally social activity that, you know, you can sing with other people, create music with other people, listen together and share memories. Um, so often when engaging with music, it can decrease isolation and increase those feelings of connection when you're sharing that music with someone. And similarly, kind of related to connecting with others, you know, music can improve communication. And one thing we talk about is that Music can be a nonverbal form of communication, right? When we're, we have, you know, let's say I'm in a circle with a bunch of percussion drums out there. We can have a, a percussion, a rhythmic conversation where we're tapping the drum and then this person adds the shaker and this person adds this and we're really connecting and communicating but without even using words. Um, so music gives us that um, opportunity also in addition to supporting verbal communication as well. Um, and it just, you know, it provides this opportunity to create new memories together when you're sharing a song, when you're maybe these days attending a, zoo, a virtual concert, um, or hopefully at some point, a lot more live music, just kind of getting to share music with other people, um, find meaning there um, and, and, and feel that connection um, uh, through the music. So, that's all I wanted to say <laughs> was kind of thinking about music and the brain, music and our bodies, music and our emotions, and music and our connection with others. Um, I think Judy mentioned that this is going to be recorded. So if there were parts of that that you want to go back and look at, um, you'll be able to access that after. Um, but I think at this point, I want to get into some more songs and we're going to stick to familiar music, probably songs you've heard before. I'll have some lyrics up on the screen and everything I mentioned at the beginning still applies, you know, see what's around you that you want to tap or add some, some percussion to. Knees actually are great, of course, fingers. Um, feel free to sing out. Um, I know you, we can't really see each other too well, but if you're seeing other, a few other people on the side of the screen, you can also just enjoy kind of watching other bodies sort of sway along, right? How we're all connecting and engaging with the music. All right, so 
We're going to start with a Simon and Garfunkel song. I'm going to get my guitar here. And this song, interestingly, is called the 59th Street Bridge song, but they never mention the 59th Street Bridge. I think it's more thought of as that song called Feeling Groovy. So let's see if we can groove a little bit here. So as that guitar comes in again, just feeling that sway. Yeah, awesome. So it's gonna start with slow down, you move too fast. Here we go. Slow down, you're moving too fast. It's gotta make you got to make the morning last. Just kicking down the cobblestone, looking for fun and feeling groovy. Yeah, hear those ba da da, ba da 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 da, feeling groovy. Let's do those ba da. So hopefully Simon and Garfunkel got us in the mood to do a little more grooving and singing. We'll go on to the next one here. So this reminds me that some of the songs I picked, I picked them because today is Earth Day. So I thought we could honor Earth Day with some songs about nature. And Here Comes the Sun is definitely one of those that came to mind right away. So I think this is one of two Beatles songs I ended up with on the list here. And even though it ended up being a little chillier today than it has been, we still have sun, at least over here where I am. So enjoying the sun coming through the window. We'll sing a little Here Comes the Sun. Or 
chorus, Here Comes the Sun. Here we go. Here comes the sun. to a tune from Oklahoma. Oh, what a beautiful morning, which definitely came to mind when thinking about our Earth Day theme. So let's get ready for this one. So one thing about this song is it's in what's more of a six eight feel so if i or almost more like a waltz so if you think of it like one two three one two three you kind of feel that so that's extra good for swaying that one two three waltz yeah awesome so we'll start right in there's a bright golden haze there's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. And the corn is as high as an elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a
verse by far. Just looking at that first line, all the sounds of the earth are like music. So we'll start in there. Here we go. All the sounds of the earth are like music. All the sounds of the earth are like music. The breeze is so busy. It don't miss a tree. Got in a little Rodgers and Hammerstein there. And definitely a good Earth Day song. Another Earth Day song here. I was thinking of more of a folk, folk tune. This land is your land. So Hannah, I just yes. want you to know it's like 20 till. We've got plenty of time. I just want to give you a time check. That is perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So for this one, I think we know, we, know, we know this tune. I have it kind of split here again. So the chorus is on the side, but we'll start there and then we'll jump back over to those verses. I often play things fast, so let me slow myself down. This land is your land. 
sparkling sands of her diamond dozens on all around me. A voice was sounding. The slam was made for you and me. Let's go to the next verse. When the sun, when the sun came shining, then I was strolling and the wheat fields waved. was changing as the fog was lifting. This land was made for you and me. Back to our chorus. Here we go. This land is your land. This land is my land. From Guthrie for that one. So let's see, we definitely have time for maybe two more tunes. What do I have up next? Ah, we'll slow it down a little bit. That This Land is Your Land, you know, has a lot of words and not a lot of place to breathe. So this song will take some deep breaths. We'll slow it down a little bit. There's a lot of beautiful imagery. So you can allow the words to kind of paint some pictures of the green trees, the roses, the blue sky, etc. Let's see. Oh, that sounds like I might need to tune my guitar just a little bit. good swaying song. Here comes I See Trees of Green. I see trees of green. I think to myself 
said, oh, what a wonderful world. Let's do the whole thing again on a la, just again to feel the music. La, da, da. Stretching a little. Let's do the last verse again. I hear babies cry. I hear babies cry. Yes, I think to myself, oh, what a wonderful world. <sighs> All right. So let's see. Oh, looks like the next one I have is I can see clearly now. So maybe that'll be the last song we'll sing. And then we'll shift over to a little Q and A. Um, but this is a really fun tune written by Johnny Nash. I think there's a singer named Jimmy Cliff who does a version too, but I did look to confirm that Johnny Nash was the songwriter. Um, This can be one of those sort of, um, in addition to just some, you know, some nice nature imagery in this one too, kind of some of that, the resiliency that we can get from some song lyrics too and some empowerment, right? So I see all the obstacles in my way, gone are those dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, sunshiny day. So that's where we'll close. has a nice kind of mid-tempo feel. You can kind of feel what your body wants to do along. A little bit of swaying, maybe a little bit of clapping or tapping.
side, there's this little bridge. Look all around, it says. Look all around, there's nothing but blue sky. Look straight ahead. gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. All right, just in case we have any mouth trumpeters or whistlers, we're gonna have a little instrumental section here. I'll add a little mouth trumpet. Feel free to add whatever you'd like to. Let's see. Johnny Nash to wrap up the music there and can take any little stretches or oh so I got a couple more songs that I'm going to skip but they're in the pdf that Nori sent so if you want to have those lyrics those are there too um I wanted to make that point Hannah thank yeah. you so much by the way I'm getting Absolutely. not not everybody is chatting to everyone but I keep getting this oh my god I love this where are it <laughs> And the big question is, do you do these all the time? Can we, where can we find you? Where are you performing these days? <laughs> well, the, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I, maybe we should set up something more regular with the Dementia Care Collaborative because I live mostly in the cancer center at MGH. So that's the, the one thing is that the, the music therapy department is housed in in the cancer center so that's mainly where i spend my time but maybe we could do more of these one-offs and yeah and something we need to include probably in our philanthropy is music therapy mm -hmm. and a, a way to offer that all the time yeah yeah there got it, it. <laughs> <laughs> um so i wanted to go into just a couple things that actually are also mostly on one of the handouts that nori sent in the email this morning too um, but just kind of thinking about, okay, so how do we bring more music into our daily lives um, in a more intentional way? Um, and I also want to leave uh, time for any other additional questions. So I'll, I'll go through this kind of quick, but. Can I um, just say quickly, if yes. anybody, because we want to keep everybody on mute for the recording, everybody can just put their um, comments and any questions you have for Hannah in the chat. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so a couple suggestions. So one is to remember, you know, when you're feeling a little stressed or a little tense to put on some music that you find calming and relaxing and take some deep breaths and listen to the music and kind of be present with the music and um, give yourself that space to just maybe even put some headphones in and just kind of be with, with the music. So um, definitely kind of remembering, you know, to turn it on. Same when you need motivation and energy, thinking about those songs that, um, you know, that for you are the songs that make you tap your toe and make you move your body and really kind of using those in the moments when you need that motivation. That can be for exercise too, right? We all know that putting on upbeat songs or exercising can just make it go a little, a little faster. 
Um, another thing to think about is engaging in something meaningful while listening to your music. Um, so whether that's creating some art, um, gardening now that it's heading into spring, taking a walk, even, you know, cleaning or organizing. Sometimes if you have the right music on, you know, the household chores can go a lot faster too. Um, so definitely thinking about using it as a, as a motivator to then do some of these other um, sort of wellness activities. Um, another thing I often suggest, I think I mentioned this pre briefly, is making playlists for different moods, for different times of day. Um, uh, Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music, um, they all have op uh, options to make your own playlists. Um, so you can, you know, kind of go in and, you know, maybe make a playlist for joy or uplift or make a playlist for relaxation or a playlist for motivation and energy, um, etc. And, and of course, since we talked about the power of music in terms of social connections, just to remember to share music and the memories it evokes with loved ones. Um, I think there's even a line in the handout that connects to this you know, maybe have your own little karaoke night, put on a playlist of songs that you love to sing along with and, you know, together with your loved ones, you know, sing along to those tunes and then maybe share the stories that, that they evoke or that they connect with. Um, so, so there's a handout that was in Noria's email this morning called Music as a Wellness Tool in our Dementia Care Toolbox. And it kind of goes into a little bit more detail with some suggestions for using music for wellness. Um, so that is there. And let's see, this is where I was just putting, opening it up for questions or comments. Anna, I just wanted to share really quickly, if I can, one of my favorite, favorite families ever. Um, mm -hmm. I, they kept talking to me about how do we get my father to speak more? He was such a, he was a teacher and language was such a part of his life. And he was sort of had just become withdrawn and inward and wasn't speaking very much. Karaoke night though. They had, they didn't plan on it. It was somebody else's birthday and he was just going to be there. He was up, they couldn't get away from it. He remembered every word of the songs and was able to sing so differently than he was able to talk. It was, it is a fascinating um, thing and so therapeutic mm -hmm. for the family too, for all of mm -hmm. us and right. for him. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and if we think back to some of those things about music and the brain, how it's like those memories and those lyrics are just going to be there. Um, so if you can pull out, yeah, those, you know, those, especially songs from kind of younger years and childhood or early adulthood. Um, your first date. First date, yeah. <laughs> With your exactly. first love. Those songs we remember so well. Exactly. Yeah. So it is, we're right at two o'clock. Um, we did have one um, person who talked about, and I'm not sure, this is curious, um, very, it was a, she thought it was a great idea for us to have more um, opportunities to sing with you, Hannah, um, and said that they often play music from their church YouTube stream, which I love. Mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. Um, and they use Alexa show screen to help sing along. They use the words oh. on Alexa show screen to help sing along. So I'm not sure if everybody saw the slides, but I wanted to make sure that people got the PDF that was sent out this morning with all of these songs plus more. Mm -hmm. And um, we try to make sure you can see the words on here. So, and that also see. makes me think that, um, or to mention that YouTube does have a lot of um, great, you know, uh, sing along, like karaoke sing along videos where they have the lyrics down at the bottom. So if you put in a favorite song and type in, you know, karaoke version, you'll sometimes find a, a YouTube video with the lyrics right there. So you can sing along. Um, so yeah. We have a social worker from um, primary care here. I'll just, we'll end with this, um, who said her, her colleague was so disappointed she couldn't be here, but that she thoroughly enjoyed this, both the singing and the educational aspect. And thank you for sharing this experience. Yeah. Absolutely. And what I did put up here, oh, uh, Oh, why is, oh, my computer might be freezing. So then it might not let me show the last slide. <laughs> is it showing just a white screen right now? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, there we go. So what I was going to say was, there's my email. So feel free to reach out if you have questions or want help connecting with other, you know, community music resources, et cetera. Um, I'm happy to, to connect and, and see if I can, you know, there's, um, community choirs and 
um, song circles that are, some of them are still happening virtually or hope to start in person soon. So um, if you do want to reach out and kind of let me know what you're looking for, I can try to help connect you with some of those things too. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're all giving you a round of applause. It feels <laughs> like it we should do that at the end of singing, right? <laughs> So, and I just want to thank everybody who joined us today. And I so enjoyed uh, singing along with everybody. I saw all the swaying and smiles and it's just a beautiful experience. So uh, look out for new announcements for the next things we have coming up. It's, I can't wait till the day we can see each other in person, but it's nice to see you here. So bye everybody. Thank you. Bye Hannah. Take care everyone.